Hi everyone, welcome back to Kristen's Epic Adventures. I'm Kristen and today we're gonna go over some of the really neat ways that you can get around the world of Eberron. So if you enjoy Dungeons and Dragons and role-playing game content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you know when new videos are posted. Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're talking about the really cool ways that you can travel all around Eberron. You may have been able to tell from my Artificer video that I'm really kind of taken with Eberron and I'm really anxious to play something in that setting. It just sounds so cool to me. I know it was a setting that existed in previous editions of Dungeons and Dragons and they kind of redid the Eberron setting book and brought the Artificer class back and all sorts of cool things. But there's some really neat ways that travel occurs when you want to get around Eberron. So I thought I would go over those and make sure you stick around to the end of the video for a special surprise. So what they use to travel around Eberron are things called elemental vessels. Now there are Lorander airships, Lorander galleons, and the Orion lightning rail. Now these are what they sound like, airships, um, water ships and or train but they are all elemental vessels meaning they are powered by elementals magically now they also use dragon shards and in eberron dragon shards are crystals that are imbued with magical energy and they're found around eberron i believe underground and in different areas and at different depths depending on the shard there's three different kinds of dragon shards but the vessels use two different kinds out of the three. They use kyber dragon shards, which are actually used to bind the elemental to the vessel, and they use Siberus, Cyberus, Cyberus, I think. We're gonna go with Cyberus. <laughs> Cyberus dragon shards to craft the vehicle's helm. Now, first let's go over the Lorander airship. This sounds really cool. Anyway, it says that the book says that this is the most advanced elemental powered vehicle on Eberron. And it's actually made of soar wood, and that's S O A R wood, which is a buoyant timber that's found on an island. Now, elves live on this island, and they actually limit how much of this soar wood is harvested annually, which makes it pretty rare and makes the airships very rare and very expensive to build. But I thought the whole concept is just sounds really cool to me. The whole concept of this buoyant timber, which helps these ships float. Um, airships can move in all three dimensions with or without the aid of wind. And they can't, these floating airships can't actually land because they have these struts that stick out from around the ship that hold the elemental ring in place around the ship. And there's one on the bottom, so it can't actually land. So to get passengers and cargo onto these ships, you have to um, load people and things either in elevators or for tow use towers, which I thought sounds really cool when you're talking about like the way a city in Eberron or a town uh, would look. The fact that there's these little towers with loading platforms to get onto the ships sounded really neat. They have a speed of 20 miles an hour in clear skies and they can carry up to 30 tons of cargo. That's a lot. Um, so these Lorander airships sound so cool to me. I just, I really want to have my character ride on one of these <laughs> or at least have it be part of an Eberron adventure that I take part in. Now there's also Lorander galleons. Now a galleon resembles the airship, except it uses a water elemental ring around the, the ship to propel it across the ocean. It has a 10 mile an hour speed. And then, like I mentioned, there's also the Orion lightning rail. Now this is just like it sounds to train. It's made up of an elemental vessel linked to a series of connected carts and the book kind of described them like, almost like wagons, but with no wheels. Uh, it did say that some of them have open tops that are just kind of covered by canvas, but some of them are fully enclosed. And they did have different carts like um, sleeping cars, dining cars, lounge cars, and storage cars, just like on a regular train. 
Um, these also float though about five feet off the ground and the really cool thing that propels the Orion lightning rail is each cart has a conductor stone embedded on the underneath and that's a magical stone and there are corresponding conductor stones laid out in a line on the ground that form the rail. So they kind of make like a lightning connection between the conductor stones, the one on the, on the car and the one on the ground. And that's why it's called the lightning rail. It makes a little lightning between the two and propels it um, forward and also uses a, uh, an elemental. Okay. Uh, uh, an air elemental, a bound air elemental propels the train and it also goes up to 30 miles an hour. There are lightning rail stations in or just outside most villages, towns, and cities. Uh, I did mention that the train's not allowed to stop in between. Um, they just stop at the specific stations. And the other cool thing though that, about these that were in the um, Eberron book is that there was a D100 table of mysterious passengers, which I thought sounded really cool of, um, you know, you could, the DM could roll on this table to determine what mysterious passengers are found on the train or the galleon or the airship. These are some really neat ways though, that you actually travel around the world of Eberron that I wanted to share with you guys. I thought it sounded really neat. I want to hear from you guys, put some comments down below what you guys think of these trains, the lightning rail, the airships, the galleons. What do you think? I think it sounds really cool. Um, and I have something special that I picked up that I'm going to unbox. This is so neat. I just, I, I am a person who likes miniatures and playing with maps and minis, although I don't mind theater of the mind as well. But when I saw this, I said, I have to have this. This is um, Icons of the Realms, WizKids, and D&D put out the Eberron Sky Coach. The, we're going to unbox it. The Eberron Sky Coach. This looks so awesome. This will look great out on your uh, game table with your minis and everything. So I thought we would go ahead. I have to, it does need a little bit of assembly because it needs the wings things put on the side. I thought we'd open this up and check it out. It's already all painted and everything. I already cut the end. So let's just go ahead and open this up and see if I can get it out of the box. Let's try this. Push from one end. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Come on. It doesn't want to come out of the box today. There we go. I, I had to have this. There. There we go. Okay. I'll put the box on the floor. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, look at this. Wow. Oh, this is awesome. Very cool. There's the, uh, let me block my face cause it will try to, the camera will try to focus on my face if it can see my face. Very cool airship here, but it's got pieces that we need to put together. So it's got a little ladder that helps people get up on the ship. I think this is a gangplank. I might need to read. Sorry if this, if the um, plastic is making noise. It's got the little wings here taped in so that they don't fall out. Oh wow. Got the little wing pieces that we gotta put on. There we go, wing pieces. Let me get all the pieces out and then we'll put it together. Because I don't want to try to talk over all this noise. Okay, and there's Oops, some other pieces here underneath the plastic and the base. You know how the bases of the minis always say on the bottom what they are? It says Sky Coach. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get the box out of here. And let me see. These are like the plastic extenders and things. 
I don't see any directions, so we might have to just look at the pictures on the box and figure out what goes where. So let me grab it again one more time. See if I can figure out from the pictures here what goes where. Okay, this big piece goes right up here on the back. Awesome. Okay. I'm not sure about these little green globby things, what they're really supposed to be. It says con contents. One sky coach, one gangplank, one ladder, four sore sleds, and 12 sore sled extension pieces. So these are sore sleds. I don't remember seeing in the book what on earth that was, what a source sled was. Oh, look, there's little spots over here on the side so you can put either the little rope ladder or the little gangplank that way too if uh, you're going to load from a tower. See, the little uh, rope ladder attaches on this side, the gangplank on the other side. So, but they would obviously not travel with those on. But let me get Whiz kids, I need pictures. <laughs> this is the big base. There's got to be a way. Yep. Sure. This attaches somehow. All right, these are the little extension pieces. Those are cool because you can adjust these and make them all different heights. And these are the bases. So these little globby things go on these at whatever height you would like them to be. So let's just put some of those together and try to figure out this ship one more time. There's got to be a way this ship goes on. There we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two. Put one down here. Ooh, there we go. Nope, fell off. <laughs> there. And, boy, that would be really tall. Okay, let's make a really tall one. Okay, so there's those globby things. I don't know if those are still in the shot. What I'm trying to figure out though, okay, these two little things go onto here. Then this, oh, it slides on to the bottom piece. I got it. It slides on to the bottom of the ship. Ooh, my hair. There we go. <laughs> There we go. So now it can sit and stand and look like it's floating. I wonder if you could actually add some of these things. Nope, you can't. They're just for the glob things. All right, but I've got to get the rest of these fins on here. Let's see. I'm gonna to try to look at the picture here and figure out. Fin, fin. All right, so I got one of these, two of these and two of these. So we got the big one, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. A couple of these go, these go on the sides, I think. Oh, that's like a little ball. It's almost like a, it's like a ball and socket joint. So it moves. That's cool. It's like a, like your hip. <laughs> it's kind of a weird way to describe it, but it's like a little ball and socket joint. So once it pops in there, it can actually move. I wonder if I should have done this part before I put it on the, on the base. I'm trying to be careful. Some assembly required. There we go. There's the second one. So we got those in. Uh, let's see. So there's got to be some more holes back here for the rest of these. Oh yes. One, two, three. Okay. So I'm betting the big one here. These are like the, this is like the rudder goes in the middle. How to assemble toys without breaking them. There we go. And look, 
boop, 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 boop. It goes back and forth. And then these ones go on the side. Get in there. There we go. And those all move too. Hey, I figured it out. <laughs> Thanks for the directions there, Wiz Kids. They're probably like, if you can't figure this out. Is that in there all the way? Oh, the bottom one's not in all the way, but I don't want to force it right now. But anyway, so these are all pieces that move, the little rudders on the back. This moves too, and then these. <gasps> How awesome is that? So when this is operating, right? You got little lanterns here. When this is operating, there would be a ring of a fire elemental around it. So there'd be like a magical ring of fire around it that would propel it. That's awesome. That's so cool. The Eberron Sky Coach. He's a little crooked. Let's get on there. All right, and we got the gangplank and the ladder so people can get on board. I have to look up what these things are. Sore sled. Not sure. They look kind of fun and interesting, but I don't know what they are. <laughs> so we're gonna, we'll do some more research on those. But I wanted to go over with you guys the different ways of travel and the fact that WizKids Dungeons and Dragons had this awesome mini, it's not, I don't even know if I'd call this a mini, it's so big anyway. I thought this was really awesome. I'm probably gonna put it on the bookcase right back here. Neat. So uh, that's our video for today. If you are interested in lots more Dungeons and Dragons and role-playing content just like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you get notified when the new videos are posted. If you liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button too. Give us a thumbs up. It helps more friends find us. Thanks guys, bye.